So there's this thing I, I've, I've labeled it, uh, the Hollywood syndrome, right? Um, I wanted to come on here to talk about needs and really communication. Okay. And, uh, it's kind of frustrating as a therapist because I'm trying to get couples to express themselves. Oh, y'all see my little berderm, my hands be ashy. I'm trying to, um, express, uh, get my couples to see how you may have needs, but expecting your spouse to just know what they are. So in Hollywood, the reason I call it the Hollywood syndrome in, in the movies, when you're like super in love, if there is such a thing, you just, you know, you just know what the other person needs. Or should I say, you know, like the men in the movies, they just know what the woman, they can, it's like they can read her mind. It's like they were literally taken from his rib. And, but guys, that's a script. It's a movie. In real life, you have to communicate your needs. Okay. You have to tell your partner what it is that you need and what you want. It's common sense and obvious to you, but not to them. And we think that when we meet someone and it seems like they know us, that that means we have a special connection. It's my argument that that was luck. Or y'all are similar in that particular area. But guys, you got to communicate um, your needs and your wants. Along with that is uh, this piece about communication when you're saying something and uh, I want to encourage you to to be what I call a, a examiner, so to speak. When your spouse says something to you or your partner says something to you that uh, either you don't like or you, you know, you take offense to before you respond, ask them, what did you mean by that? Right. So like if my, if my wife came to me and said, you know, um, I don't think you love me like you did, you know, three years ago. Most of us at that point, what do you mean? I don't love you. I do this. I do this. I do that. That's the wrong response. That's called defending yourself. Here's the appropriate response. Oh, babe, I didn't. Okay. So, so tell me what it is that you see that makes you feel that way. Like, what am I doing to make you feel like I don't love you as much? Number one, I validated her feelings. I told her that I'm listening. So now she lists the things. Well, you, and she says, you know, well, three years ago, you used to always buy me new notebooks each week. And that made me feel special. And so, I know in my mind, I haven't been buying notebooks because I know that was important. So my response then is, oh, OK, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I think if I if I valued notebooks the way that you do, I probably feel the same way. So I get that. But uh, I apologize for sending you that message. I'm going to do better and I'm going to make sure that I, you know, get on that problem solved. You know, I didn't have to get offended by her accusation that I don't love her the same. But what we do most times is we just go straight into defense mode and start fighting. You know, I can't believe you think that about me. Well, I mean, one reason you shouldn't get upset about what someone else thinks about what your partner thinks or their perspective is because of this. Number one, they're human it means they're flawed. And number two, their perspective is not just about you, your behavior, and your words. Their perspective is formed by what they receive from you, but then it is filtered through their history of experiences, beliefs, and everything else. And so when they come to a place or a conclusion that's either inaccurate or you don't like it, there's no reason for you to get upset. Just examine to find out how they got there so you can help them be better. So I've communicated two things to you. Number one, be, be, be the kind of person that says, Hey, I need this. So at first it's okay to just, you know, go with the flow, 
you know, let's say, let's say, let's say your wife and you, you want flowers every week. Let's say you want flowers every week, but you never communicated that to your husband. So when you guys first were dating, he was actually doing that because that's what he liked doing. And he was trying to woo you. He didn't even know that he was doing something that you already liked. So you thought, oh man, he's amazing. He's lucky. So anyway, you get married, flower stop. Because for you too, uh, the flower experience was not the same. It was different. But both of you think it was the same. Why? Because we humans are arrogant and we think everything, we think uh, subconsciously that everybody either is or should be like us. If you don't believe that, go outside. If you see a man walking down the street naked, you're going to be like, what the? The only reason you would have that response is because you don't believe he should be doing that. And you can do that across the board. So anyway, so <clears throat> you, you used to buy her flowers. Now you don't. So when she comes to you and she says, uh, I mean, so, oh, cause I'm on the first one. So here's the communication of the need. So it's going weeks and now months. And then that's a couple of years and she's not getting flowers each week. How it typically happens and where I'm trying to get you away from is now she's just upset in a funky mood all the time, you know, just kind of because she has these beliefs. He don't care about me. He's not buying me flowers. He doesn't value me. I don't really matter to him. Now, if somebody believes those things, I can see why you have an attitude. But the reason you believe it may not be accurate. So here's the way I want you to handle it. Tell the brother, hey, so I'm feeling a little unloved because I want flowers each week. Hollywood says don't do that. Hollywood says he should just know. And then that's why the divorce rate is so high. One of the reasons, because we're following the Hollywood model. Those are movies. They're scripted. Like somebody wrote that literally. <laughs> you, you can't go by that. So communicate your need, even if you think it's common sense. It's only common sense once we learn it. So communicate what your need is. And then the second part that I communicated about communication is um like this would be for the man when she says, Hey, you don't love me as much anymore. Oh, baby. Why? What's up? What makes you feel that way? And you just, so you just bought her a car last week and you just went and rescued her from the side of the road the week before that, because she's your wife. Like you're not doing these for brownie points, but you're showing her that you love her. But she comes at you and says, you know, I don't feel like you love me the same. Don't get upset. Find out what she means. Because she may not mean the same thing that it means to you and your internal dictionary. So you ask her, hey, what do you mean I don't love you um, the same? What's giving you that impression? And then she says, well, because in the beginning you used to buy me flowers every week. And now you don't buy me flowers every week. And flowers are really important to me. When she says that, you still don't get upset. What she's sharing with you is her perspective on flowers. It's different from yours. But you're not the one with the need for the flowers. So you say, oh, OK, my bad. I think I missed that. That's, I'm, that's you, know, you don't defend yourself and talking about what you do. And I did this and I did that. And, you know, this should be OK. No, I apologize. I missed that. I'll do better in that area. And then now she she was heard. Uh, she expressed her need. Right. And then you expressed uh, the you were the examiner and and then you were able to meet the need. Last thing I'm going to share with you is this. The thing that keeps us from doing that is pride. Pride is at the root of 100 percent. That means every single one. 100 percent of divorces. Pride. And pride is egged on, <clears throat> excuse me, egged on, um, instigated. That's the word I want. Pride is instigated by its big brother even though they're twins, big brothers, a few minutes older, fear. Pride is instigated by fear. If you live your life in fear, or if you do marriage, if you try to do love in fear, number one, it won't work. It cancels each other out. It's like a positive and a negative. It equals zero, right? 
uh, because love and fear are complete opposites. So if you're living your life in fear, your relationship will suffer. Your life is going to suffer. <clears throat> but the thing is, don't be so prideful that uh, you won't walk towards humility and say, you know what? They're not getting it. Let me communicate it. Let me just tell them, you know, or uh, don't let pride consume you. Uh, to keep you from being the examiner, you just get upset because you think everything is about you. It's not about you. Get over yourself. It's not about you. OK, um, I know that was a little choppy because I kind of did that. Just like I don't even have notes for that. Uh, I just wanted to share that with you. But um, be about the business of being an effective communicator. If you are a bad communicator in 2020, don't let June 2021 show up. And you still suck at communication. Like if you know you struggle at it, get better. Why? Because the only way to have a better marriage is for you to become better. It's by becoming a great spouse, not wishing you had a great spouse. You understand what I'm saying? So make it your business. Make up your mind. Make a determination that, hey, I'm going to be great regardless of what they decide to do. Why? Because I signed up to be a husband. I signed up to be a wife. And I'm going to do that. Keep your word. And when you do that and not be offended, then you can more effectively deal with their deficiencies and help them be your life partner. Instead of trying to make them uh, be what you want them to be or punish them for not being who you want them to be. They were not created in your image. All right. All right. You guys have uh, a great weekend and join me Monday for the third and final installment of um, fatherhood on manhood Mondays, manhood Mondays will continue, but this Monday we're doing fatherhood. Uh, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of following the theme of Dr. King. It's going the, the title is a legacy of leadership for fatherhood. But in this talk, I'm going to capture the last three uh, themes of fatherhood, which is uh, the example of a father, the wisdom of a father and the protection of a father, right? And we'll be dealing with those three on this Monday at seven o'clock. If you don't have the link, go to my website, cliftonbrantley.com and uh, register for it because I may do something special for the people that register. Uh, actually, yeah, I, I may do something special for the people that register, but either way, check that out on Monday. And then after that, the following Monday, I don't know the date, but the following Monday, we're going right into uh, being a husband on Manhood Mondays. And I'm really looking forward to that. Got a lot of information to share. All right. You guys enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Uh, and I'll see you next time.